All right, today we're going to look at materials for learning the Japanese language. A uh, heads up, most of my materials are in German, uh, some are in English, and a few of the German ones are also available in English. So it's going to be a little bit of a variety here. I'm, since there are so many uh, different materials, I'm going to try to speed through them. Uh, and assume that you also have some knowledge of like Asamil or you know what it is at least and um, you're familiar with what kanji are and whatnot. So starting out we're going to look at the Kanji Learner's Dictionary by Kodansha. This is the older one. There is a newer one with just over 3,000 characters. And instead of having to learn the radicals, like all seven, I think it's 79 radicals, right? So it's a little more complicated to figure that system out. There's a skip method that they have, which, so looking at this, um, it breaks kanji down to four groups. So you go, let's see, two, three, five, so three on the top, five strokes, and based on stroke order too. So three strokes on top, five strokes on bottom, and voila, you have three, five here, top, bottom kanji, and ta-da. Very, very straightforward. Gives you the numbers um, and the stroke order, gives you different meanings, examples, and whatnot. Um, they do have a couple other books uh, that are, let's see, translations of, they're for learning uh, Japanese, but they're I'm trying to think of how to explain it. It has the works of famous authors, and they're translated into English with the original Japanese, so it's parallel text and it has below kanji and um, basically it's like a dictionary below as well and it corresponds directly with this book for additional meanings and whatnot. I highly recommend them. One is a smaller orange one, one's a thicker blue. Um, the smaller orange one has, uh, when I got it at least, free audio uh, and since it's you know famous works of actual authors and whatnot, it's, um, let's see, Basically, they're audiobooks. Um, it's really high quality, so I'd highly recommend those, and I'll link to those below. We've got the Japanisch Deutsches Zeichenwörterbuch. Basically, the same thing, but without skip, so it's a little harder to use, but you can still study with things like this. Um, it's not terribly, terribly hard. You just have to go kind of character by character or, you know, figure out the radical system, which probably should anyway, um, even with the skip system. Let's see. Speaking of kanji, so we'll go with the uh, kanji and kana. This is again in German, same author as the other book, uh, different house, publishing house though. It goes over all the writing systems, uh, the base 2000 kanji you're going to need. Uh, I'd recommend it for you know practice and learning meanings and whatnot. It's always good to get a couple of uh, dictionaries and a couple of books for these types of things uh, in order to get. Um, Every author has, you know, every author will translate things slightly differently based on kind of their understanding of the language or their own kind of style. Uh, so sometimes it's good to get a couple of them because sometimes one translation won't fit just right. Um, so it's just a quick recommendation. So let's see, reading Japanese. Uh, I believe this is the Yale series, and they have some other books, but we're going to skip those because I don't have those. Um, so it goes through the katakana, the hiragana, and it gives you examples. Right? So na, and we've got multiple examples. Um, we're going to skip that to get to this. So they give you kanji as well, along with readings, and pronunciations, and whatnot. And the nice thing is the practice drills, the, uh, the reading drills, as you can see, are written standard, like how Japanese would be written. Uh, Japanese can be written left to right and is commonly done so, but in books and things like that, menus, a lot of cases, it is not. It's actually written top to bottom. So I'd recommend this book. Um, there's the ISBN if you're interested in that. I'll actually show the, let's see, let me flash the ISBNs for these books real quick. This is the Kana one. This is the... Don't get this one particular volume, get the new one. It's a much better deal. All right. So, let's go on to something people are maybe a little more familiar with, Asamil. Um, Asamil is a fantastic book. Let's see. You get the Japanese on the left, it's pretty standard, and then the translation on the right. Uh, the English should be pretty much the same. Uh, whenever I've seen the Asamil courses translated, they're usually the same. Sometimes they're from... A different generation so that that might be a slight issue but usually the audio is the same and corresponds and whatnot so yeah I'd highly recommend it aside from the um, 
Some lessons, let's see. At the end they do have this, the vocabulary broken down by pronunciation or like ta ti tu te ta chi tu te to so that kind of a thing, uh, iueo, so you can look it up. They have tables for the hiragana, katakana. It's katakana table, and they're also really kind enough to link to some other resources, or, you know, give you an idea of some resources that not only they publish, but somebody else publishes. Another series. Um, the thing about the awesome mill, if you're, you know, assuming you're already familiar, you know, the whole CD is only, you know, the audio is only in Japanese, um, for the Chinese, the Japanese course, um, two volumes, and then there is a third one, which is the characters, which in this case, I don't know about the Chinese one, but the nice thing about the Japanese one is the basically the dialogues and all the texts are put back into the book, but like how you would read them in Japanese. And there's no there's no translation or anything, this is just like how you'd read it in a Japanese book, an actual book. Um, gives you the stroke order, the meanings of the kanji and whatnot, and tends to be a little bit cheaper than the regular courses because there's no audio and whatnot. Um, so it's really, really nice. Um, the great thing, though, is you probably won't need to get two volumes, uh, depending on whenever they publish this one in English. This is the updated one, which is just one volume. They cut out the 99th lesson, so it's only 98 lessons, but they also added in every seven lessons which looks to be a new trend of awesome mills that they're um every seven lessons instead of just grammar they're actually adding in texts so i see that in a lot of the newer courses so this is fukushu kaiwa it's like a review text conversation oh, kaiwa conversation so yeah there's that um which has new audio new different speakers um some of the other older lessons were kind of modified or edited uh, not all of them. It's basically the same book. So uh, I would recommend if you get the ones available now in English, maybe get this one too after you've worked through them a bit because it's basically the same and it's easier to carry one book. And you get the Fukushu Kaiwa, the uh, 14 new um, texts. Uh, but I don't think I'd get the audio, to be honest, because it's going to make it much more expensive. And since it's not that different, not necessarily worth it, whereas the book you can probably pick up for about $20 American. So let's go over to a really fantastic course, or not course, but uh, books that are available in Japanese. So if you want to read, um, we have here the Grimm Fairy Tales uh, from Autori Ao Bunko, uh, which is like Bluebird, and you'll see this a lot because they have a bluebird, and it's their little bird. The great thing about these books is, um, as you can see here, the kanji, uh, from what everything I've seen, basically they include kanji, but there's always furigana. So if you're having trouble or it's a kanji you're not quite as familiar with, um, it looks up, for example, too, the reading is really nice. So I believe that's the atama kanji, meaning head, but in this case it's pronounced differently. I, I could be wrong, that might be a different, you know, uh, kanji, but just very similar looking. That does happen quite a lot. Um, these books can be picked up really, really cheap, especially if you go to Japan to visit. Um, yeah, it's, it can be really, really cheap. So, here's Japanish Fuzi from Maksuba Falag. Um, really nice, the first lessons are romanized, and there's a lot of grammar uh, points and whatnot too. So we'll just go over the basic stuff, like... So this is the first lesson. They get gradually more complicated. I believe you get about a thousand words from this too. But in, when you go to the back, on the other hand, you do get the complete Romanized, uh, not Romanized, but in character. So all 16 lessons are also available in uh, Kanji, Hiragana, Katakana. Uh, I would recommend that book. It's, you know, if you speak German, it's pretty good. We have here Conversational Japanese uh, from Cortina. If you're not familiar with Cortina, think Awesome Mill, um, but just a little bit different. And uh, I think you can get audio for them, but they tend to be a little more dated. Um, and just think really cheap. In a lot of cases, you can pick them up. I think in America, I think I got a few of them for like four bucks on Amazon, so four dollars. I'd highly recommend them. Um, basically, in the starting ones for this, uh, this book is little different than some of the other ones. Um, for example, let me think of a good ex way to explain it. Pattern drills. There we go. So you get more, 
you have kind of the translation here, a text with translation. The notes are more in the back on this one, um, the, the grammar and whatnot. But you do get the exercises, which are pattern drills and tend to take up several pages. Initially, they do give you the vocabulary in the first few lessons. Uh, they, it's pretty much the same as the Russian lesson, or the Russian one as well. And you'll see here, this one says it gives you about 2,000 words in the dictionary. So I would assume that's also uh, throughout the um, throughout the lessons. I highly recommend it. You really cheap and you know a little dated, but you know doesn't hurt. So this is actually not a book to learn Japanese. This is Kauda Welsh for Faroish, Faroese, but they do have this for Japanese. I don't have it myself, but you can pick it up really, really cheap. I think with the CD, it's like less than twenty dollars American. They give you the pronunciations, um, a lot of the basic phrases. I believe they have about a thousand words vocabulary. One of the nice things about these books is they do go into some cultural points and whatnot, but. They give you grammar. That's one of the main, main points. And um, in this one, I think they give you, um, they tell you about some other sources that are available. Really, really cheap. Uh, the CDs, for example, um, because it is German, the CD has it in German and then like, Guten Tag, Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa. So they do it like a little faster and then slower, slower and then faster. So highly recommend that if you can speak German. <laughs> We have here Langenscheid's Praktisches Lehrbuch Japanisch. It's in three volumes. I only have two here. Um, the first book is primarily in um, is primarily Romanized. The very last lesson has Hiragana. But one of the really nice things about this is you get it starts out with um, basically the same as the Cortina one, but the slight difference is that um, afterwards you get well actually it's think very similar to the Cortina, take that back, no, no but on that, but you have the um, the example exercises, or examples with, um, example sentences with translation, uh, it's all Romanized, but you'll get the German and the Japanese together there, and then you have your grammar, and it's pretty extensive, it goes up to like 22, and it's good to read, you know, if you speak German, read it in German, then Japanese, and you know, so you have an idea of what it's saying, and let's see here, let's see, You'll see here, this is the last lesson, which is really nice. So they get you familiar in the last lesson with uh, Hiragana, and then they move on to, let's see, the next book also starts out with Hiragana, and uh, as you get towards the end, or they, at the very end of the book, they re-offer all of it with the kanji and whatnot, so you can reread it in that case with kanji, or you can, you know, you can learn the kanji in some cases with it, so it's really nice. Um, not terribly expensive. I believe they do have um, cassettes, but I don't have them for this. Anything with cassettes, typically I stay away from myself, but you know, if you have a way to make that work, go for it. Uh, they do have this also available in English, I believe. It's a visual dictionary. They're really fun. Um, they give you a lot of uh, vocabulary. It says 12,000. I don't know if that includes... I don't know if they're kind of double counting with that. I always assume they do, but... You know, still even considering half, that would be, what, 6,000 words, so here's space, for example, the different names in the language, they give you the, and they still, the nice thing too is they, you know, if you're never sure on something, or if you're from a, you know, I know sometimes the word will change depending on, uh, like, the der, die, das, for example, in German, it can be a little different, um, or if you're learning it from, uh, what is it, uh, another language that has, uh, like masculine and feminine articles, they'll usually keep that in too. So these are you know, pretty good books. They're fun to just kind of take with you, and they're fairly cheap. Um, and it does include, you know, the kanji and whatnot, as you can see, along with the romaji. So highly recommend those. Good for flashcards, things like that. Here's a really great grammar. <coughs> Pons does a really good grammar series, Katz und Bundig, and. Uh, the nice thing about these grammars is they're supposed to take you to, I guess, a B2 level in grammar. They do include, for example, um, quite a lot of stuff, actually. A lot of vocabulary, a lot of grammatical structuring. So you get here, like, Rote Stift, here on the top. Akai Pen. Akai Pen. So they give you Romaji and Kanji and the other the other writings. Uh, they don't always use the Kanji, but they give you Kanji in a lot of cases anyway, so... You know, sometimes they use, I, I don't know what level of kanji they use, whether it's like high school or uh, things like that. So, 
Yeah, but they go over a lot of the stuff, um, the verbs, how you would say it, um, the helping verbs, even though Japanese doesn't have it, they try to, you know, give it to you, explain it to you in that context, so really, really good. Um, highly recommend it, and like the name, Kurtz and Bundish, it's a very small book. They tend to be, you know, really short, and they have them from multiple languages, too. Highly recommend if you can use German. Um, we have your Japanische Alltagssprache. So this is one of the cases in which if you don't really speak German, that's not. but you have like an intermediate Japanese and you need more like CDs or practicing um, tools, this comes with two CDs. It's probably available for about $40 American, like on Amazon or whatnot. Um, it's a really, really great book because it has the Romaji and uh, the Kanji. So example you have here on the right, the German translation, Romaji, and above, the Kanji. And this covers a wide variety of um, things, so like the flu, uh, what's it, flu, uh, airport. So they just, they cover a wide variety of things and what you would need, and there's some practices and whatnot, and the CDs are pretty good. Um, but it's just nice, like, even if you don't speak the language, like for example French, my French isn't very great, but I still have the French book for Asamil. Um, partly because if you if you get enough of the vocabulary, it, it really, really helps to practice with different books. So this one I'd highly recommend also because they have like all the vocabulary in the back as well. Uh, this is like a dream come true. If this was available for English, uh, I would definitely say, in you know, that's what you're trying to learn from. I, I definitely recommend getting something similar to that if there is something like that available. Um, next thing we're going to go to real quick is Kindle. Um, let's see. Give me just a second. Let's go ahead and do the... Japanese can be gotten on this. I don't know if I'd recommend doing that, though, before you have... I don't know, more of a, let's go with Folk Legends Japanese. So there's, th this will be in English right here, but you can do this, click on a word, and it'll pop up with uh, the definition meanings. You can get different dictionaries uh, for Japanese and whatnot. Uh, if you get something with kanji though, what's really nice is you can do the same thing, just like the, so click on that, get an idea of what it means, which is really, really nice. Um, the problem though is that you'd have to do that for almost probably every single word if you're not at all familiar with the text or the characters. So it's definitely better if you're a little intermediate, but that can definitely be a great resource. And Kindle you can pick up fairly cheap, and you can get a lot of free books online um, for Japanese and other languages. This is a book also available in English, I believe. Japanisch Wortschatz für Anfänger. So it's like, um, voca not Wortschatz, um, maybe vocabulary it would be a uh, for beginners, might be a good way to say it. Um, from English, from Magnus Peterson, so let's see if we can find an English title for you. Uh, basic Japanese Vocabulary and Explanation of Usage. Here's the ISBN for that. Um, ISBN for that one too, by the way. So, let's go through here. It goes over a lot of like the homophones and things like that. So right here, explaining words that are similar, so kaku. Uh, you know, explains whether it's used for writing or the specific um, usage of the word in a certain context. Um, Things like that. It's it's you know fairly detailed. Goes over a variety of things, and it's good to probably better for somebody who's already a little more intermediate because then you'll have more maybe used to try to figure that stuff out. Um, let's look at everyone's favorite Mina no Nihongo. So we have two volumes here. Excuse me for one second. So we have the two volumes. Uh, they're basically used for any language th that's available um, to learn uh, how to explain it. Basically, these don't have the grammar and the um, those types of things in there. It's all Japanese. So, first lesson is perfect. Let's take a look at that. So we have here the first lesson. Um, usually gives you kind of an idea of what you're going to be going over. You've got some practice, kind of text, um, conversation, and yes, there's this, they come with CDs. Um, I don't have them in the book right now, but it goes over also kind of a um, practice, so yeah, you'd say practice, kind of a pattern drill type of thing. 
They've got a few exercises in the book, um, whatnot. Um, they've got some practices that you listen to the CD to try to figure out whether, whether it's accurate or not. You've got your register in the back. Uh, so this is all, and it tells you what other languages this is available in. This is is probably something you'll use with a, a tutor or somebody helping you specifically, and you've got a workbook in the back that explains everything. You have also for it a, if you want to do like the, a lot of the exercises, you'll need the, excuse me, <clears throat> separate workbook, which, you know, goes over a lot of the stuff. Go to... This is where you'd learn from like a teacher or something, and you've got like 23A. So it's based, it's comparison for lesson, lesson for lesson 23, 20, lesson 23. So um, try to answer questions. There's the correction in the back again. So really great. Uh, number two goes up, goes up to lesson 50, 26 to 50. Same thing. Um, what's different though is, for example, I have here the grammar, and that is. In German, they have it available in several Eastern Euro uh, Eastern Asian languages, and the main European languages: English, German, uh, French, Spanish, Italian, and Russian. Um, yeah, so and that gives you uh, the English one. From what I've seen, I, I, they might have one that's similar to this, where it just gives you like hiragana, kanji, and uh, the translation. However, the ones I've seen so far are. Uh, Romanized, so you know if that's your thing, go for that. But uh, you know if you're going to be using, since the books use a lot of kanji, I'd probably recommend using that instead. And then it gives you the translations of the, let's see, the pattern drill, the example sentences, and the dialogue. And then it gives you some other stuff, uh, words, and you know similar vocabulary and grammar. Main grammar points of that lesson. Pretty straightforward. It's not highly expensive, it's fairly affordable. So we have here Japanese um, Teach Yourself. Pretty standard. I don't particularly myself care for the um, CDs for a colloquial or um, Teach Yourself because, from what I recall, they use a lot of English, so I stopped. I, I never really bought them after that, or I just get rid of the CDs. Uh, too much of a hassle. I tried editing the audio once. Too much of a hassle for the one I had. Um, I think some of them are broken down a little bit better, so maybe not as much of a hassle anymore. But uh, yeah, you can get this one. These pretty cheap. Uh, this is completely romanized. Um, this, on the other hand, has a little bit of a different method for the first five. So if you're going to learn with uh, this book, I'd recommend um, maybe getting it first. One of the prime examples is because of this. So, example, dozo yoroshiko. So you can see here, hiragana with romanization. And I, I think the rationale for that, it's the first five lessons only, I believe, but the rationale was that it's kind of reducing the shock of a different alphabet. So, uh, not bad courses. I, any course, even if you don't per se like it, um, can still help because you're going to need multiple courses, by the way, for really getting through a language. Um, and we're going to look real quick at Japanese intensive, Japanese intensive. Um, harder book to find, German only. Um, let's see. First lessons uh, start out with vocabulary and then they go into grammar. And let's see. Can't find it. So and it tells you what how it breaks it down here in the. Um, Coast tile. So let's see. We've got vocabulary, grammar, sentence, and then it goes down to exercises based on the vocabulary. It starts out um, more written, like kanji and whatnot. It looks more like written. Uh, later on, they do actually give you more like the printed and the written to kind of give you an idea. They give you a lot of kanji. It's an older series. There are cassettes available for that. Um, let's see. Quite soon. Should be fine. So it gives you here. Here's a text, and that's more like what written kanji is going to look like, which can differ just a little bit. And you get here. That's what it's going to look like printed. You get your vocabulary. Pretty good book. Uh, you can use it intensively, as the name implies. It has 15 lessons for the first book, and I believe five for the yeah five for the second. The second book, on the other hand, is, sets itself up just a little differently. It does the printed text right away. And then vocabulary, grammar, pretty much the same setup. The third book is a little harder to find. 
um, a little more expensive, the ISBN for the first book. Second book. And you have here, uh, this can be used pretty much for anyone um, from any language background. It's just practice writing, basically. Um, I mean, you can copy the pages, you can use pencil, it just gives you the stroke order and whatnot. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty cheap, even though it's technically intended for Germans, it's, you know, German-speaking people, it's you know, pretty straightforward. Um, we have here, um, Grundkenntnisse Japanisch, so it's in two volumes. This is a newer edition, the first volume. The second edition I don't think has a newer edition and still only has cassettes. The first one has CDs. Um, cassettes are kind of a hassle nowadays anyway, right? So, last book it looks like. So, great thing about this, really, really good, uh, quick rundown. It gives you, oh, I believe, 3,500 words, um, vocabulary. It gives you about 1,200 passive kanji and 600 active kanji. And yeah, really, really great. This one is one of my favorites. Um, quick thing about German books, by the way, they tend to... Germans are very disciplined people, I guess would be the best way to put it. So if you have Germans in your family, you might know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, if you live here in Germany, so you, you probably know. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, how to describe it? They're, they're really good about using, like, kanji in a lot of the books. I, I've noticed a very strong tendency in the books I get that almost overwhelmingly use kanji. If they start out with the kind of romanization just to get you acquainted with it and then moves very quickly into, you know, the um, the foreign alphabet that you're going to be using. Uh, very, very German, very German personality. So the first 30 lessons, um, each book has 15, so a total of 30. Use um, the little bit of the... Um, Romanization starts out with a pattern drill, conversation, usually another conversation or text, uh, all in CDs, and then it gives you some questions or practice parts of the um, the uh, conversation. Then it gives into vocabulary, which is really nice that they give you the kanji straight off the bat and the you know the uh, romanization of that for the first lesson uh, for. The, the first three lessons afterwards, Hiragana, Katakana. And let's see, they give you a lot of vocabulary that's actually not even included in the um, the uh, lesson, so it's also kind of nice. Gives you additional vocabulary to practice with. And then it gives you about 20 kanji per lesson, stroke order, uh, on and kun reading. It gives you, uh, yeah, a lot of practices and exercises. And the really, really th nice thing about this book, too, so it gives you on the back translations of all the texts um, into German, of course. So highly, highly, highly recommend these.